many of you have family in town with you tonight? Let me see your hand. How many of you are going out of town this weekend to be with family? Let me see your hand. You need to pray for me. I'm taking a red eye flight to the East Coast tonight all night long and I just already got words that it's delayed because of all the freezing and bad weather on the East Coast. So I called my wife and started singing, I'll be home for Christmas. I, planes, trains, and automobiles. I'm gonna try to get there one way or the other. Give me a few minutes. Our goal is that this entire thing lasts 90 minutes. And uh, so I'm very aware of the time that we have. And uh, wanted to share something with you, then we'll end with our candlelight service. Sing a Christmas carol or two together, then I'll dismiss you to enter your Christmas festivities. Thank you for being here tonight. Those of you that accepted Christ, uh, there is a connect card in the back of those seats. And also, if you are a visitor, if you don't have a church home, it ain't about the music, and I believe it's amazing. It certainly isn't about the preaching, but I believe you're sitting amongst some of the greatest people I've ever met in my life. What a privilege it is for me to pastor this church. And if you don't have a church community, a community of faith, boy, we would love for you to give us a shot. We're not perfect, but we sure are trying to bless our community, amen. Let me talk to you just a moment about God of the impossible. God of the impossible. Throw Luke 1 up on the screen if you would, guys. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. So they were in a house, and the angel just walked right in. Can you imagine that? You just sitting there having dinner, and an angel just walks right through the door. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Next verse, please. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Verse 30. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. So you're blessed and you're favored. And behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great. He will be the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that the Holy One who is born will be called the Son of God. Verse 36. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Lord, bless these next few minutes in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. At this church, we talk to each other. So say, here we go, neighbor, here we go. Can I have about 15 minutes? This story always intrigues me because I get amazed and amused at all the people who talk about how they see angels. I've been around a lot of people, Christians and non-Christians, who believe they've had some type of angelic encounters. And even on our cartoons and even in our new baby rooms that we make in our house, we have angels and they're all made out to be nice little babies with wings. Have you ever noticed that? Nice little babies with wings and stars around them and pixie dust going through the air. And we've just got this image of angels just being the most baby-like, most infantile creatures. And, uh, and they're so nice and they're so loving and so squishy and everything else the way they look. But let me tell you something. The angels in the Bible, the Bible speaks of several different kinds of angels. There's seraphim. The seraphim are angels. The Bible says that they glowed in such a brilliance that no man could look at them. The Bible said they show up at the tomb of Jesus and the Roman soldiers who were trained military, I mean trained military soldiers, these were killers. 
that when they saw these angels, they fell to the ground and shook like dead men. Bible said that when their wings would fly, it resembled the sound of thunder. With, they had six wings. With two, they would cover their eyes. With two, they would cover their feet. And with, and with two, they would fly. So only two wings would create a sound like thunder, a glow that you couldn't look at. And in their presence, even soldiers would fall and shake like dead men. The Bible talks about cherubim. The Bible says that cherubim have eyes all over their whole body. From top to bottom, they have eyes. They're covered with eyes. The Bible says that cherubim on the inside of them have a wheel that whirls on the inside of them. Ezekiel's called it a wheel inside of a wheel. So something is in their being that is whirling all the time, and they are a being that is covered with eyes. We know that Gabriel is only mentioned in the singular, and he is an archangel. He is a warring angel. We know the Bible talks about the guardian angel. Some of you are wearing your guardian angel out in 2022. I mean, after this last year, your guardian angel is on a walker and got high blood pressure after what you put them through. <laughs> the Bible talks in the Bible of Revelation around the throne, the living creatures and the way they glowed. And they also had eyes all over their body and says that when they would speak one to another, that the post of heaven would shake. Why am I telling you all this about angels? Did you come for me to preach to angels tonight? No, but I did want to show you this one thing because angels are a big part of the birth of Jesus. Psalm 103, for those of you who are wondering what angels are and what they do, Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word. So angels do the word of God, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you hosts, you ministers of his, who do his pleasure. So the Bible says that the angels listen or hearken to the voice of the word of God. In other words, the Bible has a voice. And angels do not listen to your voice. But when you speak the word of God, they heed that voice. And you have the power and the authority by speaking the word of God to put your angels on assignment on your behalf. You got to know that in the beginning God made the heavens and the earth. That means there is a realm that you cannot see. And that realm that you cannot see is the realm that the Bible says is real. It says all this is temporary. The Bible says for the things we can see are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So if there's conflict going on here, there's conflict going on there. If there is difficulty going on here, there's difficulty going on there. Some of you have no idea what your angels did to get you to this building tonight. You have no idea how many assignments there were to take you out. Some of you that haven't even been living for Christ and you had so many things designed to take you out and you're still here and you didn't know grandmama was praying for you. You didn't know mama was praying for you. And while that last drug addiction or that last overdose should have took you out, you're sitting here tonight. That last car crash when you were drunk should have took you out, but you're not. Why? Because there were angels around you that were protecting you, and you didn't even know it because somebody was speaking the word over your life, and angels were being dispatched and keeping you until this moment right here tonight. <laughs> My son worked his angels over. Totaled seven cars, and we've been to about four rehabs and arrested about 20 times, and uh, he had a whole pile of angels. I mean, God had to put a bunch of them on payroll, and he wore them all out. They retired right after my son got out of high school. They all retired. Looked at God and said, I'm done. <laughs> but how many times they kept him? How many times I saw mangled cars, and he'd get up and walk out of it when I knew God was there, and God, by his angels, had protected my son. I said all that about angels because if soldiers are shaking, if you saw an angel, you'd know it. It would not be a pixie dust experience. You probably would have to go change your clothes. <laughs> These are mighty beings that war in the heavens over your life. And the Bible says 
that Mary, a 15-year-old virgin, was not troubled that she saw an angel. See, that would have made me mess my pants up just seeing an angel. That didn't bother her. She was troubled at what he said. And he said, you're blessed and you're favored. Why would anybody be upset with that? What's the opposite of blessing curse? Well, I sure don't want to be cursed. It favors a whole lot better than not having any. And he says, you're blessed of the Lord and you're highly favored. And she was troubled because even as a 15-year-old, she understands that blessing brings opposition. The Bible in this word right here, blessing, it actually means to be put in an enviable position. I just speak the blessing of God over everybody's 2023. But you got to understand everybody will not celebrate your blessing. When I was pastoring seven people in a warehouse, nobody was mad at me. But when you start getting 20 acre campuses and a quarter of a million square feet in the Silicon Valley, you got all kind of enemies. Because the blessing of God brings up a I don't know if I'm talking to the right crowd tonight. How many of you believe you're blessed? How many of you have had your share of opposition? Mm. She was troubled at what manner of greeting this was. Give me just a few more minutes and I'll end this thing out. The blessing would come in this form. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you. That word overshadow means to brood over and it's the same word of intimacy that we would use in the Bible of a man hovering over his wife at the time of conception. The Holy Spirit is going to brood over you and you are going to conceive a child. When the Holy Spirit supernatural comes upon you natural, Jesus will be manifest. Can I tell you something that's still the way it is all the way to this day? The Holy Spirit coming on you and Jesus is manifest. The Holy Spirit coming on his word and Jesus is manifest. That way that he started it, it travels all the way to us today. I need the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon my natural and make it supernatural so that I can manifest Jesus everywhere I go. And he says, this blessing is going to come in this way when God's going to come over you. And then when both of you come together, you're going to manifest something powerful. So what does it do? Number one, the blessing will show you who can go the distance and who cannot. When she got pregnant, Joseph wanted to leave her. And God had to visit Joseph in a dream and tell him not to. Why? Because he was engaged to her and now she's walking around with a baby bump. Come on, y'all need to really re read what's happening here. This is not a fairy, this is not a Santa Claus story. This is 2,000 years ago and you got a teenager walking around and her body is beginning to show that she's pregnant. So when she walks by, everybody is giving secrets. Everybody's talking to another. She's the butt end of every joke, the jeers and the sneers and everything that are being talked about. And Joseph wants no part of it and he wants to leave. Why? Because how would you like to be a boyfriend and your girlfriend come home pregnant and try to tell you that a spirit did it? I promise it was God. It was the spirit that did it. Okay. What's his name? Where's he at? <laughs> so she had to go tell Joseph she's pregnant and God did it. His reaction was probably like ours would have been. Where does God live? What's his number? <laughs> it shows you who can go the distance. When God blesses you, that means there's purpose for your life. And some of you that have lost people this year in relationships, and some of you that have seen people that may have run with you for a very long time, no longer around you and no longer with you, let me tell you, that's good news. Because the Bible says if that's happening, that you're blessed. Matthew 5, verse 11. 
Blessed are you when they revile you, when they persecute you, and when they say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Blessed are you when they revile you and when they persecute you and say all kind of matter of evil against you falsely for my sake. The Bible does not say you're blessed when everything's going right. The Bible does not say you're blessed when your bank account's full. The Bible doesn't say you're blessed when your kids are acting like an angel. The Bible says when people are talking about you, the Bible says when people are lying on you, the Bible says when they're assaulting your character, when there are people standing in the way of your progress, that's how you know that you're wearing the blessing of God. Because you having a blessing is an indictment against them for not having one. Because one day of the Lord's favor is worth more than a lifetime of labor. And you got to understand, people can't clap when God is giving you in a day what they've been working for for a lifetime. The blessing of God will get you jobs that you shouldn't have. It will get your resume put to the top of the stack. Who am I talking to? It will get you through doors you shouldn't walk through. It will get you opportunities you're not qualified for. I'd rather have the favor and the blessing of God than every degree, than every friend, everything in my life. Somebody take five seconds and give God praise if you know you're going into this next year. Bless! Ah! I got to finish. Look at your neighbor and say, don't ever apologize that God has blessed you. And God will make a table before you in the presence of your enemies. David's brothers rejected him and wouldn't even let him in the house. And then the prophet Samuel went out there and poured the oil on him in the presence of his brothers. God will pour your oil on you and make everybody that hated you sit there and watch you while you get it. <laughs> the blessing of the Lord reveals others' issues. It revealed Herod's insecurity. Because Herod's trying to kill babies. Why? Because he's scared this baby is going to dethrone him as a king. Joseph's insecurities because he don't want his character in any way assaulted. He wants to jump ship. The blessing of God on you always reveals the heart and the intent of others. The Bible talks about Joseph getting a coat of many colors. The Bible said his brothers hated him for that coat. They were fine because the coat, until he got the coat, because it represented the favor and blessing of his father. And let me tell you something about blessing and favor. People are all right with it until you start wearing it. They don't mind you talking about it. They don't mind you shouting about it at church. But when your life begins to wear the favor of God, that's when you see what their heart is really like because blessing reveals the heart of others. So what do you do when you're blessed and favored? Go to verse 37 and 38. I think I gave it to you. Of Luke 1. For with God nothing is impossible. Did I give you verse 38? Then Mary said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed. Next verse. I may not have the yeah. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah, and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. They had to leave their country and flee to Egypt. They had to run from King Herod. God had to talk Joseph into staying. And finally, you have to make a journey to find somebody else who has the same blessing as you. Who do you talk to when you're blessed and favored? Somebody else who's blessed and favored. Look at your neighbor and say, that's why we need to be here. Come on, tell them, say, that's why we need to be here. Would you stand on your feet with me all over this room? <clears throat> if I could have the lights brought down, if I could have my candle, please. Thank you.
People may wonder why we do these candlelight things at Christmas. They're being done all over America this weekend. Why? Because the Bible says that in Jesus was light. The Bible says in him is no darkness at all. Now listen to this. And the Bible says, and that light is the light of men. The Bible says that Jesus spoke to his disciples and said, so let your light so shine before men. How do you do that? Open the door for somebody. Open the door for somebody carrying a box yesterday. And you'd have thought I bought him a Rolls Royce. Random acts of kindness. A gentle word instead of wrath. Letting them cut in front of you instead of shooting them a bird. I've asked too much, at not I want you to lift this high and hopefully these cameras will get the whole world can see tonight a group of people in the Bay Area of California who say my light is not going out there is a world that needs to see your light tonight hallelujah come on out here Lizzie if you would and just lead us in a course as we lift this light into the air
in Jesus' name. May this be the best Christmas you've ever had. May the warmth of Jesus fill you and everything and everyone connected to you. Forgive quickly. Be gracious and merciful. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. And go into 2023 with the expectation that everything you thought was impossible, it is possible with God. Can everybody say a big amen with me in the building? Hallelujah. I'm about to dismiss one point of instruction. If we could just bring the lights back up just a moment, please. We will not be having our regularly scheduled Sunday services. So if you come this Sunday morning, we love you, but you'll be watching it on your phone. Okay. Starting tomorrow night and five times Sunday, we'll be doing virtual services. We will be here again next Friday night, doing this again before New Year's and then run virtual services New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. So it's two back-to-back Fridays. We're so grateful that you came. Look at everybody around you and tell them Merry Christmas. God bless you. You are dismissed. Have a Merry Christmas.